Our scripture is found in Philippians, the first chapter, 12 through the 14th verse. And it reads as such. But I would ye should understand, brethren, that the things which happened unto me have fallen out rather unto the furtherance of the gospel, so that my bonds in Christ are manifest in all the palace and in all other places. And many of the brethren in the Lord, waxing confident by my bonds, are much more boldly to speak the word without fear. We are continuing in our series. There's opportunity in this. And this is part seven, blessings that come from brokenness. Blessings that comes from brokenness. Amen. I want to sing a little bit of a song that's on my heart. I love you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. is the proclamation of the gospel despite of his own difficult circumstances. Yes, yes. And though the severity of Paul's imprisonment is reflected and his death appears to be a very real possibility, Paul kept his hope in God. Mm -hmm. Because Paul kept his confidence in God, Paul's captors began to be evangelized. They began to believe God because in Paul's hard times, he kept believing in God. The very prison that Paul was locked in became a place of evangelism. Yes, yes. The very thing that was designed to stop the gospel actually spread the gospel even faster. The very prison that was intended to steal Paul's faith became a movement that started right in the middle of the prison. The very thing that was supposed to take his joy brought him joy, even 
Paul's enemy that were seeing him bound started preaching about the goodness of Jesus Christ. Yes, yes. Instead of Paul's affliction stopping him, it was heard about God that Paul served from the prison to the palace. And my goal today is to empower you with the revelation and knowing that there is blessings coming from your brokenness. I remember, if I could just keep it 100, yes, yes. I remember a season in my life where I was having a moment of truth. And in my moment of clarity, I asked God, I said, Lord, I hope that what you have allowed me to go through is going to be worth it to me in the end. And I know this sounds self-centered and really me-oriented, but I just want to feel, I just wanted to feel at that moment that everything that I have seen as a believer, everything that I have experienced, everything that I have walked through because I chose to serve God, I just wanted to know that at the end of the day, it was going to be worth the struggle. Have you ever gone through something that you just wanted to ask the Lord, Lord, do you see what I'm going through? Yes, yes. Are you aware that I'm hurting and that I'm in pain and I, I don't understand? Have you ever had an honest conversation with God? And so, Lord, are you cognizant that what I'm experiencing is changing how I see life? It's changing how I see you, Lord. I, I just want to be, I just want it to be known, Father. Are, are you with me? Do you see what's happening? I was tired of being broken. I was tired of fighting weariness. I was tired of frustration and constant battles in my life. And I just wanted to know, Lord, why does everything in life always seem like it has to be a fight for? But then I looked around and I recalled greats like Angela Davis, greats like Martin Luther King, greats like Malcolm X, greats like King David and Albert Einstein and Barack Obama. And it immediately humbled me because I was able to recognize that the greatest people that has ever lived has often functioned from a capacity of inconvenience. They learn how to maintain balance in the most destabilizing yes. situation. Yes. When other people were giving up, they found out how to be effective right. even in their trauma. Right. Amen. Then I went into the scriptures and the Lord led me to these four verses. And I want you to write these down. Philippians 4 and 13 says, I can do all things through Christ. Now, if you're at home, go with me. That strengtheneth me. Type strengtheneth me. Yeah. Type strengtheneth me. Hallelujah. Ephesians 6, 13 and 17 says, Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day. And having done all to stand, stand therefore. Yeah. Having your loins girt about with truth, and having the breastplate of righteousness, and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel, and the heaven of salvation, and the sword of the Spirit. I want you to write down Colossians 1 and 16. That says, Christ himself is the creator who made everything in heaven and in earth and the things that can be seen and the things that can't. The spirit, the world, and the kings and kingdoms, its rulers and authority was all made by Christ for his own use yes. and his yes. own glory. Yes. I want you to write down Philemon and 1 and 6, and this is from the Message Bible. And I keep praying that this faith we hold in common keeps showing up in the good things we do and that the people recognize Christ in all of it. And so I said, okay, Lord, thank you for that. And I began to meditate on these scriptures and I want to look closer. And do you not know Philippians, Ephesians, Colossians, and Philemon? was all written by Paul while he was in prison. Wow. <laughs> Some of the most encouraging, faith-building, 
revelatory, strategic, intellectually stimulating words in the Bible as we know it came from a man that wrote it while he was in the depths of his trauma, while he was in prison. While Paul did this, did this, let's keep it in context. This is not a man who is getting up eating three meals a day. This is not a man that is going and coming as he pleases. This is not a man that can get on the boat and go back to Tarshish. This is not a man who can go back to Jerusalem. But this is a man that was locked in the bowels of prison that said, I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me. This is a man while he was locked up that gave us strategies and how to withstand against the devil. This yeah. is a man that while he was locked up had a revelation that all things were made by Jesus Christ. This is the man that declared right in the face of the devil in full defiancy that my faith is going to outlast my storm. While Paul was locked up, he realized that there is blessing that are gonna come from your brokenness. Now, 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 what does it mean from blessings from brokenness? Blessings from brokenness. Blessings from brokenness. It almost doesn't make sense. Blessings from brokenness. Right. And huh, let me say that again. Blessings yes, yes, yes. from brokenness. Yes. Out of the place of your affliction, will come revelation of your affirmation. Let me say that again. Out of the place of your afflictions will come revelation of your affirmation. Watch this. Afflictions or adversities are a necessary part of the Christian experience. Psalms 34 and 19 says, Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers us from them all. Watch this. One of the most fruitful times you will ever have as a believer is when you're going through afflictions. Because it is your afflictions, there are miracles that are occurring in the areas of your influence. Let me say that again. Because you are in the afflictions, there are miracles that are occurring in the area that you have been afflicted in. Somebody type, he's increasing me. He's increasing me. God often uses affliction to enlarge you and expand your territory. In other words, at the place where you have been impacted the most, God is going to use it to expand your ministry and the influence in that area. Watch this. Blessings from brokenness is a part of the Messiah anointing type, Messiah anointing. Go to 1 Peter 4 and 1. I want you to see this. It says, for as much then as Christ has suffered in the flesh, arm yourself likewise with the same mind. For he has suffered in the flesh, has ceased from sin. In other words, as Christ has suffered in the flesh and was an example to us, we have to arm ourselves likewise to suffer, to be an example to our brothers and sisters. Oh, this is not going to get a lot of likes on this one. You don't believe me? Go to Colossians 1 and 24. Let me take my time on this. I want you to see this. It says, but part of my work is to suffer for you. Wow. Part of my work, yes. part of my ministry, part of what God called me to right. is to suffer right. for you. Yes. Watch this. And I am glad, for I am helping to finish up the remainder of Christ's suffering for his body, the church. In other words, oh God. In other words, everything that I go through is not just benefiting me, but it's benefiting you. Colossians 1 and 24. Listen, I like the way the message Bible says this. It says, I want you to know. 
I want you to know that I am sitting here in this jail and not you. I'm glad about it. <laughs> Listen, let me start all over again. I want you to know how glad I am that it's me sitting here in this jail yes, and not yes, you. Yes. There's a lot of suffering to be entered into the world. The kind of suffering Christ takes on. And I welcome the chance to take my share in the church's part of that suffering. When was the last time you made up in your mind that if it takes me suffering to get you out, that I'm willing to suffer? Watch this. Paul knew the greater the affliction, yes, yes. the greater the anointing. And along with the greater anointing came greater influence in the places where you are afflicted. Blessings from brokenness, watch this, right. means you have received a unique anointing for evangelism through hardship. Evangelism through exampleship. Watch this. Anytime you see the anointing, it is for a purpose. Right. Pay attention. The anointing is always released to help others overcome their circumstances. The anointing is rarely for you. Help me, Holy Ghost. You show me five places in the Bible where the anointing came on just for that person. But the anointing was always to benefit somebody else. Woo! Watch this. Let me show you this in the Word. Luke 4 and 18 and 19 says, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives, the recovering of the sight to the blind, to set at liberty the, that are bruised, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. Not one time did Jesus say, the anointing is upon me so I can glorify in myself. The anointing from brokenness allows you to bless others because you have been favored with God's unmerited, unwarranted assistance to use your brokenness as a testimony of God's keeping power. The anointing from brokenness allows what you're currently going through to be a tool of evangelism to encourage someone else to serve God and what they are going through without fear. Just like Paul, watch this. We're gonna read our topic scripture from the Message Bible. Watch this, this is heavy. Paul said, I wanna to report to you friends that my imprisonment here has had the opposite of the intended effect. Instead of being squelched, the message has actually prospered. Wow. All the soldiers here and everybody else too found out I'm in jail because of the Messiah. Another word for the Messiah is the anointing. Yes, yes. This piqued their curiosity and now they've learned all about me. Watch this. I prophetically declare to you that the next move of God is going to be presented by people that has unselfishly said yes, Lord, to their brokenness so they can be a blessing to somebody else. The kingdom of God is shifting. Somebody type and say shift. The kingdom of God is shifting. We have allowed the sugar daddy, bless me only. I'm not willing to go through. It's all about my four and no more. It's all about me. This messaging has permeated into the gospel. But if you want to be in the next move of God, you have to be able to be unselfish and put others before you. Blessings from brokenness. Blessings from brokenness. Blessings from brokenness. The Lord told me to prophesy to you and tell you because you are putting somebody else before you. 
Your word of faith is going to take you to places that you have only dreamed of. Your, your reputation from your affliction is going to precede you. Watch this. How you have treated people during COVID-19 is going to dictate the increase in your life. If you have been selfish in this time, don't expect God to open doors for you. If you got to give me, give me spirit. Don't expect God to make ways for you. If you got to me, God. He will provide for you, but the supernatural manifested divine anointing for increase is going to pass you by because you want increase for you and not God's glory. Oh. Oh. This blessings in your brokenness. Watch this. Stop looking at the world in your own little microcosm. You're bigger than this. I declare to you, watch this, that people are going to start coming up to you and saying this. This is how you know you're flowing in brokenness and blessings or blessings from brokenness. They're going to say this to you. I made it through my storm because how you went through yours. Mm -hmm. I made it through what I was going through because how you went through yours. They couldn't understand how you went through hell and high water and kept preaching them. They couldn't understand how you went through brokenness and kept your faith. And what they did is they're going to be looking at your life uh, and they're going to say, if you came through hell, uh, then I can go through mine too. Uh, the issue, I'll say this, the issue uh, uh, that, that, that we're going to have Oh, the COVID-19 has sensitized, somebody type and say sensitized. They, it has sensitized the heart of those people who are on the cusp of serving God, who are vacillating between a, a belief and non-belief. And what's happening, all these people are going to come into the house of God right. seeking refuge. Yeah. The, the pimp is coming to the house of God. The prostitute is coming to the house of God. The lesbian is coming to the house of God. The gay is coming to the house of God. The liar is coming to the house of God. The broken is coming to the house of God. And what they need to know, watch this, they need to know that if they're going through, there's people in the church that have already gone through what you're trying to get through. That means you have to be transparent. Show me your wounds. Oh, I just don't want to hear about the God that opened doors for you. I just don't want to hear about the God that made ways. I want to hear about the God that stopped your addiction from pornography. I want to hear about the God that stopped your addiction from alcoholism. I want to hear about the God that delivered you from drugs so I can put my track right down, so I can put my magazine down, so I can put my addiction down because this blessings are in brokenness. Watch this. The anointing from brokenness positions you to receive blessings for you and everything connected to you. <sighs> Let me show you the key. Go to Mark 10, 29 and 30. I almost said when you have it, say amen. <laughs> say amen if you have it. No, just kidding. And Jesus answered and said, Verily I say unto you, that there is no man that has left house, or brethren, or sister, or father, or mother, or wife, or children, or land, for my sake and the gospel. But he shall receive a hundredfold now in this time, houses, brethren, sisters, and mothers, and children, and lands, with persecution, and in the world to come, eternal life. In other words, when you suffer your affliction, yes. and you put God and his people before you, Whatever you gave up to honor God, God is going to give back to you a hundredfold 
in this life and in the world to come eternal life. I declare to you, oh yeah, that just hit you, huh? That just hit you. Listen, what the enemy wants you to believe, that your suffering is not purposed. But every time you go through something, yeah. there is a purpose behind yeah. it. Yeah. And every time you submit your will to God, yeah. God is keeping a tally in heaven. And God said, for every time you surrender, I'm going to give you a hundredfold. He's going to give you a hundredfold. That means not only you coming out, but mama's coming out. Yes, God. That means your children's coming out. That means your wife is coming out. That means your aunt is coming out. That means Becky and Karen and Chad and this man and Mark and Maurice. They're all coming out together Amen. because there's blessings yes. Ah, yes. in your brokenness. Watch this. When you're flowing and you're anointed with to receive blessings from brokenness. Ooh, this is the one that hit me all up in the chest, all up in here. Watch this. When you're flowing in the anointing to receive blessings from brokenness, you have the ability to fight for others, even when you can barely fight for yourself. Let me say that again. When you're flowing in the anointing to receive blessings from brokenness, you have an ability to fight for others even when you can barely fight for yourself. Philippians 2, 17 and 18 says this, and this is from, coming from the Holman Christian Standard Bible. But even if I am poured out as a drink offering on the sacrifice and service of your faith, let me say that again, service of your faith, I am glad and rejoice with you. In the same way, you should also be glad and rejoice with me. In other words, when I am poured out and I'm stretched beyond limitations, yes, yes, when I'm yes, persecuted and not yes. forsaken, when I'm cast out and not destroyed, yes. up, ah, it's in that struggle, you need to rejoice yes. because I'm willing to struggle for your benefit. Yes. Yes. Here's the key. The same token, when you go through and when you go through your challenges, and when you go through your hardships, rejoice with me. Because I found out three things. Either you're going into affliction, coming out of affliction, or you're in the affliction itself. <laughs> ha, let me say that again. Either you're coming into affliction, you're going out of affliction, or you're standing in the affliction right now. Let me put it in context. Either you're getting ready to bless somebody, or you're already blessing somebody, or you're positioning yourself to be blessing from brokenness. Listen, I made up my mind a long time ago that if I'm going to suffer affliction, I might as well seek God's glory in it. Ah, I wish that, listen, 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 listen to me, listen to me, Linda. I wish I could tell you that serving God would be absent of challenges. I, I, I wish I could tell you that serving God will make your life easy, but I cannot. But what I can tell you. It's 2 Corinthians 4 and 17. For our light affliction, which is but for a moment, worketh for us a far more exceeding eternal weight of glory. Make up in your mind that this body, my money, my time, and my talents belong to God. And you can use me to serve the body of Christ. Blessings from brokenness. Nobody wants to be broken. But Paul changed. Get this. Get this. Check it. Check it. Check it. Look, 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 look. How do you have a prisoner? Let, let me show you where the anointing of increase is. You have a prisoner locked up, absent of rights, absent of the free will to go and come as he pleases. Serve God.
God so faithfully in his affliction that they hear about it in the palace. What kind of favor was on his life? This is the key. The reason why we're not seeing the blessings that many of us have preached about is because our suffering doesn't get praise. Everything comes in 
your life to transition you to the next phase. Number two, stop being afraid of being closer to God. We have done a good job of scaring saints to death. <laughs> we just to be close to you. Oh, just to be close to you. And somebody comes like, hey, brother, you know, that's what it costs you your home, your car, your health, your money, the hospitality. Never mind, Jesus. Any way you bless me, I'll be satisfied. No, 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 no. Stop scaring people. Watch this. Do you know that the trajectory of your life has purpose behind it? And every single affliction is to take you higher and higher with more wealth and more increase. Stop being afraid of getting closer to God. Do you not know when you get closer to God, you get all of God? When I first met my wife, I understood. I bought her flowers. She wasn't impressed with flowers. She ain't a flower girl. I bought her a tennis bracelet. She's like, oh, oh, that's so, oh, that's so cute. Oh, thank you so much. She wasn't really impressed with that. My life, my wife's like eating. Let me take her to a good steak dinner. Are you just a bet? You're the best thing yet. And she can minister. And she's happy because I'm pouring into her. Last, listen. Here's the next thing. Watch this. Stop looking for ways to get even with those that have done you wrong. Mm. Like I said, we might get one light. I think we may lose followers. Let me say that again. Stop looking for ways to get even with those that do you wrong. 2 Thessalonians 1, 5 and 6. This is only one example of the fair, just way God does things. For he is using your suffering to make you ready for his kingdom. Yeah. While at the same time, he's preparing judgment and punishment for those who are hurting you. Stop seeking vengeance on those people that have done you wrong. Yeah. You are moving out of your position yeah. to get yeah. blessed from your brokenness. Yeah. You're moving out of position to be enlarged and increased with influence. You're moving out of position. The next thing you want to do to stay in blessings from broken is watch this. Stop being selfish in the walk with God. Stop being selfish. 1 Thessalonians 5 and 11. Wherefore, comfort yourselves together and edify one another, even as also you do. Edify someone else. Can I ask you a personal question really quick? What did y'all do with that stimulus check? <laughs> what y'all do with that stimulus check? Some of y'all are unemployment, the government is increasing you, giving you extra four, five hundred dollars. Have you treated a family in any class? Did you pay somebody bills? Instead of sitting, sitting at your account saying, I got extras now, did you help somebody? Did you hear somebody suffering and going through and you was like, I'm gonna pray for you and you did nothing to answer the prayer? That's how you get increased from brokenness. Lastly, and I'm done. Stop allowing life to steal your praise. Stop allowing life to steal your praise. First Thessalonians 5 and 18. In everything give thanks. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Church, social media, for those of you that I'm your online pastor, and if I'm your online pastor and don't know it, but I've just become that to you. Listen, stop letting life steal your praise. Stop letting life steal your praise. I'll say this in my closing. I believe with all my heart that Paul pursued God like he did because he wanted to do more good than the evil he had previously done. 
I know we're not justified in works, we're justified by faith. But every once in a while, you gotta look back and be thankful that God has kept you. Right from where you are, listen. That when this message hit me, I met tears. Just, I was sitting here during raising worship, I was just turning. And I was tearing because somebody was asking, is it worth it, God? Is it worth it? Is it worth holding my peace? Is it worth forgiving those that have hurt me? Is it worth letting go? I promise you, if you can let go and let God have his way, he's going to fix me. Let go. Mm. You're not in control of your future. <laughs> You're not in control of your future. Let go and let God have his way. Let go.
In the name of Jesus, I believe in my heart. I confess in my mouth that you raised him from the dead. And now I receive you into my heart as Lord and Savior. If you pray that prayer, you're saved. You're saved. Best decision you ever made. Listen, I want you to type in your prayer request. I need you to type in your prayer request. Amen. These people don't know you. Amen. Some people name is Laura, but your name is Skate Boogie 123. They don't know who you are. Some people name is David. And, they, and, and your name in there is Black 5678. They don't even know who you are. Type your prayer request. Type it in. Type it in. Type it in. Type it in. Type this request. Mm, type it in. Lord, change my perspective. Let me embrace the process until you bring me out of it. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we pray, Lord, for those people. We pray for those people who are bodacious enough and bold enough to put their prayer requests in. Lord, in the name of Jesus, as they're switching over from Facebook, to, from Instagram to Facebook, as they're switching over, as they're switching over, come on, switch over with us. Go to our Facebook. Pray with us. Come on, pray with us. Father, in the name of Jesus, heal, set free, deliver, make whole, make new. Turn my brokenness to blessings. And we live it so now in Jesus' name. Amen. Right where you are, give God praise. Yes, give God a praise. More blessings. I don't know if you're watching, but there's somebody named Eileen. Expect another outpouring in your business. Expect it. If there's Keith, if you're watching, Expect an outpouring in your business. Expect it. Amen. Expect it is going to happen. 